So what's up ladies and gentlemen, so today we're going to be doing 8th Lord in the 5th house and what happens when the planet that controls the 8th house in your horoscope is sitting in the 5th house. And obviously if you do not know where your 8th Lord is placed, where your 5th Lord is placed and all the Lord through houses and all the information of your astrology, for that check out the links here and check out my full astrological report including my books Astrology, Conjunction and Aspects of the Speed of Light. So what is 8th house? Eighth house represents secrets, it represents death and rebirths, transformation, sudden ups and downs, accidents, surgeries. You know, it represents other people's assets, uh, joint assets with your uh, wife. It represents your in-laws, it represents sexual activities. It, uh, you know, represents a cult because a cult is something that is secret, buried underground. Mysticism, you know, oil, gems, minerals, uh, coal, everything is found in the eighth house because... Eighth house simply are the things that are hidden from the surface, okay? Then what is the fifth house? Because our eighth lord is going in the fifth house. Well, fifth house is the house of children, education, creative self-expression, sports, having fun, gambling, you know, um, pretty much kind of like risk-taking. Uh, fifth house is speculative business. This is why cinema and, you know, any kind of uh, speculative business is um, attached to the fifth house. And uh, it's a house of also your previous past life deeds as well. Like it's called Purva Punyabhava. And usually benefits in, benefit in the fifth house do very well for a person. Okay. So when eighth Lord goes into the fifth house, what this shows is that you like to expose secrets to your students and your children. You are like, if eighth Lord is in the fifth house, shows that if you're a teacher or if you're a guide of some sort, you will be exposing secrets between you and your students or your children because that's our fifth house is. So anything uh, like kind of like what I do, like I take the secret uh, knowledge of Vedic astrology, you know, and I kind of like bring it to you, bring it to the people. Now, I know I'm not a guru and you're not my students, but it's kind of like the same scenario. A guidance who's exposing it to his students or his children. And eighth house, since it's a house of death and rebirth, and fifth house is creative self-expression, shows that you're able to understand death and rebirth in a very creative way. You present that death to people in a very fun way. You kind of tell them, look, death is not bad. Death is fun. Death is that is a beginning of a new journey into a new dimension, new planet, you know, a new galaxy, and you'll be far better off. You kind of put fun stuff into the most dramatic things. And fifth house also represents romance, okay? Uh, I've said this previously, I just forgot to tell you this time. And since eighth house represents sexual activities, shows your romantic life must, must involve sexual activities. You have to be sexually involved from day one, otherwise romance doesn't last. And it shows these people are extremely sexual because remember, fifth house is a house of fun, sports, you know. And eighth house relates to dramatic things, sexual activities. And for them, this kind of becomes a, a, a activity of fun. So these people are like always looking for new sexual partners. And since eighth house also represents, you know, sudden ups and downs, shows that you are able to handle sudden ups and downs in your life in a more fun and lighter way. But it also shows that sudden ups and downs comes into your education. You know, suddenly 8th Lord in the 5th house represents somebody who will have children late, who should have children late. Because 8th house is a house along with malefic planets that grows better with time. Because remember, an older person has a different view on death than a 20-year-old. 20-year-old, 15-year-old thinks they're going to live forever. They think they're, they're, they're too young, forget death, that is far away, far away. When somebody hits their 50, 60, they have a different outlook. Suddenly, the body starts accepting death, starts accepting that, okay, my time is going to come soon. I'm good. I'm ready. So you see how it's better. it grows better with time in the fifth house. So in fifth house, your view of having children dealing with children goes better with time. So this is why anytime I see this placement, I say, look, have children later in life. Because if you have children early in life, it feels like a death to your fun and 
enjoyment of life. It shows like you have tremendous amount of responsibility and baggage because eight house is baggage. Shows a lot of baggage towards children. Like, oh my God, you feel like even a one child will make you feel like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. You know, so always have children in your 30s with this placement and you'll feel a lot better. And so, um, you know, this is what fifth in the eighth house does. And since all, it also represents speculative business, you know, certain planets who rules the eighth house and goes into the fifth house shows that someone might go do speculative business a, a, a regarding the planet and the eighth house. Like with Mars or Saturn, somebody might be in a speculative business of uh, um, oil, petroleum, coal, you know, might be in a business of gems, gemstones. So it's all about speculative business and making business of other people's assets. So kind of like financial analyst, stock brokers, because stock brokers, income goes suddenly up and suddenly down. So those are seen from this placement. Okay. So now, depending upon what planet controls your eighth house and sitting in the fifth house, that will kind of differentiate this angle. So let's discuss that. Let's say if sun controls your eighth house, goes into the fifth house, shows that your father kind of um, instilled in you values of life and death. Shows that your father kind of presented death in a, um, in, a, in a very fun and optimistic way. Shows also that your father must have been in police force, being a detective, you know, educated himself in looking for, like doing research. Because one thing I also forgot to mention that I just remembered that fifth floor, eighth floor in the fifth house shows somebody who's good in research. So these guys are good in research as well. And there, here's the thing, since eighth house is very unpredictable, and sun is sitting in a very unpredictable sign of Scorpio. This can go literally the opposite way. It can show that your father could abuse you physically, sexually, psychologically. Because psychological issues are seen from the 8th house. So here father can actually torment you totally. And this is why something it's very hard to predict without looking at the aspects and conjunctions. Because 8th house is like this fine line. One bad aspect and it'll shift to the other way. One good aspect, it'll shift to the other way. You know, two bad aspects and one good aspect will tilt it a little bit towards the bad way. So you have to see the conjunction and aspects to really determine, you know, how this eighth lord does. Let's say moon controls the um, eighth house. Moon goes into the fifth house. What this shows that instead of father, mother showed you the ropes of life and death, sudden ups and downs. Mother made you like a competitive person that, hey, do not worry about life and death. Go out there and compete. Mother was very strict regarding your education. Mother made sure that you did your work, you did your homework. And at the same time shows that your mind, because moon is not just the mother, it's also your mind. Your mind is always into looking deep into things and technically looking into them. Somebody who might go into engineering, engineering of like civil engineering. Somebody might go into petroleum engineering with this kind of a moon. And shows that somebody who is uh, very aggressive and competitive when it comes to searching for treasure, searching for things in their life. Let's say if um, Mercury controls your uh, uh, eighth house and Mercury goes into the fifth house, shows that somebody who would love to read write and discuss as in speaking about things related to death things related to a cult things related to sexual activities they like to write blogs on sex and sexual activities here mercury loves to do research on things you know related to um, areas where they can expose something like a journalist but here instead of being a journalist they like to be the teacher they're like Hey, let me, teach, let me teach you what I just explored. Let me teach you what I just found out. So it could either be somebody who's into a cult like an astrologer or some tantric guru exposing secrets to his students. Or it could be a teacher talking about all the, uh, you know, things that are hidden underneath the history of our world or somebody who's a very good research scientist in this manner. Let's say if uh, Venus controls your um, eighth house and Venus goes into the fifth house shows 
you have tremendous love for creativity and art. And for you, art and creativity kind of has a message of sexuality in it. Kind of has sexual appeal into your performing arts. So it's kind of like a good example would be somebody like Sharon Stone. Like if you remember Sharon, Sharon Stone, a uh, Hollywood actress back in the 80s and 90s, most of her movies uh, it literally was like soft porn. And she was a Hollywood actress. So she expressed her creativity through sexual activity. In romance, these guys get really attached to their romantic partner. And for them, emotions are developed through sexual activity. So these are the people who may not be attached to you right away, but as soon as you have sex with them, boom, they're attached to you. They're like clinging on to you. But creatively, this is a very good Venus because Venus likes to dig deep for the creative things and bring them out. And usually these people kind of become those actors who might be abused in their role, do drugs in their role, be gamblers, alcoholics, kind of like those. They, they try to tap into the darker side of life. Let's say if Mars controls your eighth house, Mars goes into the fifth house. I mean, yeah, Mars controls your eighth house. Mars goes into the fifth house, shows somebody who is very good at digging deep for hidden things because Mars originally rules the eighth house and Mars is that soldier who will not quit until it has completed his mission. So these guys are very good at doing business of gems, doing business of oil, speculative business, any kind of speculative business. Because remember, Mars is a soldier who will take risks. Fifth house is a house of taking risks. So this, this person will take risk in his or her life and will try to go out there and compete, whether uh, through sports, education, or even in entertainment business. These are the very competitive people. You know, if they're going to do the education, they might become chemist. Chemistry is involved with this, uh, you know, especially if Mars is ruling the eighth house with a water sign Scorpio. And these guys make great, you know, um, stockbrokers because stockbroker requires a lot of risk taking um, heart pretty much. So when Mer Mercury and Mars are kind of involved in the fifth and 11th axis, you can see somebody who, who makes a really good stockbroker. Um, let's say if Jupiter controls your eighth house and Jupiter goes into the fifth house. Well, what does this mean? Well, what this means is that Jupiter likes to extrapolate, extrapolate knowledge of the deep and kind of look into all the details, just like word by word. Let's say if, if a guru is teaching astrology to his students, he will not just look at the bullet points and teach you the bullet points. He will go on the most finest lines written by Jaimini, Parashtra, and all the other sages that have, Valmiki, all the sages that have written astrology. He, if he goes into numerology, he'll go every single line that Pythagoras has written. And so Jupiter becomes a real teacher of exposing things. Here, a person can make a great biology teacher because Jupiter's biology 8th house and 5th house is education and research. So somebody who can become a research scientist in biology and biomedical uh, industry. Let's say if Saturn controls your 8th um, uh, house and Saturn goes into the 5th house, shows somebody who will do a speculative business of coal, somebody who will do a speculative business of life and death, like a mortuary, you know, somebody who will go into iron and steel business and do speculative business of that. Here, what Saturn might do though, Saturn might hinder your education. It may kill your education. It may, show, it, it may show you that the education feels like a real heavy responsibility and burden. And so this is why these people do far better in speculative business than in education, unless of course there's other planetary aspects there, then somebody can you know, become a um, doctor, surgeon, you know, any kind of uh, uh, things represented by Saturn in this case. But here Saturn shows that it's better to have kids late than to have early. If you have kids early, they'll feel like this heavy responsibility, like a death to your fun side. Like here Saturn is bringing really hardcore, um, you know, past life karma, saying that you must have kids late. Perhaps in your past life, you know, you got an abortion early, you killed somebody's baby in your past life. So now Saturn is saying, you're going to have to wait. So you're going to have to, I've seen people actually with this um, who have had kids in their 40s, in their late 30s as, as men or women, both. But Saturn never denies it. 
And remember, Saturn never denies something. It only delays it, okay? So guys, this was my analysis of 8th Lord in the 5th house. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And again, if you do not know uh, where your 8th Lord is placed and where your other Lord through houses are placed, for that, check out the links here on my website and check out all my books and my full astrological report. As well, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.